We are out to having trees today with Warren. He's going to talk to us a little bit all about the tubing and all sorts of good stuff. If you guys have questions, he is the pro, so he will definitely answer them. So if you have them and we don't answer them today, leave them below and we'll get to them. Let's get to tapping. And when I'm working with Warren, it's way easier to have him talk about everything because I'm the person that films. So it's just easier to film him talking about everything. So you're going to hear from him a little bit more today than usual. My drill doesn't have a precision tapper on it. Nikki's does that. You can't trust her to tap a straight pole. <laughs> you can't trust me to even work. I'm here filming. What? <laughs> This is painful to watch. So we just put, we just finished putting drop lines on today. But this tree you can see doesn't have a drop line because it's not quite big enough. The minimum is like nine inches. My hand is like roughly eight inches and I can see it's not. It's about eight inches right now. So we gotta give it a couple more years. This is one of the few woods that made me smile when we went and walked through it because these trees are really nice. And as you can see, all these trees, if you look, the whole woods kind of look silver because they're all maples. And you could, a real healthy looking maple will have a nice silver look to it. So this will be the first time they've ever been tapped. Then you can see, we got 5 sixteenths line and then quarter inch spouts. This is the third year we're using quarter inch spouts because we didn't see a loss in sap production by using them. The last two years we used quarter inch spouts and we actually, those were two record years. So we're going to keep using them. And a smaller hole is going to let the heat, let the tree heal up a little faster. So the drop lines are green. That way, after we're done tapping, if someone forgets one, it, they stand out really easy compared to the blue. Hopefully they make a lot of syrup. We'll find out. So this is our wet and dry line system. As you can see, the bottom line is inch and a half, the middle one's one inch, and then the top one's inch and a half again. So the bottom one is for the sap, and the black one on top is for the vacuum. They're, all three are vacuumized, but the sap obviously flows downhill, so it'll settle in the bottom line. That way, the sap doesn't cut the vacuum off to the rest of the lines further down, because every say about 100 feet, we have a one inch line that tees into these inch and a half lines. So that blue pipe on the bottom will fill up with sap and the black line will continue to supply vacuum to every one inch line, every 100 feet. So on this wet and dry line right here, we have 10 one inch lines that tee into it. So this wet and dry wraps around this field and catches all the taps on that side hill. And then we always run a one inch line in between the middle. That way, if there's trees that run with that wet and dry system, we just run 516s tubing to that one inch line. All three of these pipes came lashed already. This small wire, it's lashing, we call it. So we bought it like that. It's a lot easier than using wire ties and manually tying like any one foot. And then there's a nine gauge wire that we pull really tight with a come along. So we'll wrap this nine gauge wire around two end trees and then we use a come along to pull it super tight. And then like every 30 to 40 feet, we'll put a, a wire tie back. So we'll, so we'll pull one of these tie backs like every 30 feet and you pull it side to side to make it tight.
This is a big tree, so this tree's got three taps on it. Pretty much no tree ever has more than three taps in any of our woods. Just because over the years you'll end up having a million holes in the tree. And then it makes it that much harder to find fresh wood to tap. So here's a one inch main line that connects into the wet and dry line. As you can see, we got one inch going straight up the hill and then this loop that connects up into this dry line. So if this fills up with sap and then this inch and a half line is completely full of sap, that black line will still continue to supply vacuum to this line. That way you get maximum vacuum to all the taps all the time. And then we just use this ball valve for fixing leaks. So when the vacuum's on, you close this for a couple seconds and then about 10 seconds. Then you open it up and if you hear any air whistle through this at all, you know there's a leak. Even like a micro leak, you'll hear through that ball valve. So if there's a major issue with this line, say a tree falls on it or the tree falls on it and actually breaks this one inch blue pipe or cuts it in any way or rips a spin seal out and you got a major leak, we'll end up shutting this ball valve. That way the rest of the woods isn't affected by this issue. And then we'll come back, fix that problem, and then open this back up. Down at the other end of that hayfield, there's some freaky looking pricker bushes with some wicked thorns on them. I wouldn't want to get caught in them. You gotta go through with a chainsaw and cut all this little stuff down. It's all gonna die anyway. If the wood is too thick, it would all just keep killing itself. Like that maple right there died because it's too dense. There's too many of them here. So you actually gotta thin it out to make it healthy. Thank you for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions, please let us know down in the comments. And go grab some Boxer Maple syrup at boxermaple.com. <laughs> See you guys later.